What's up guys, it's Goodman5000, back for another action figure review, and today we got the McFarlane DC Collector Edition, Wave 1, these are numbered figures, so we got number 1, Superman, we got number 2, Alan Scott, number 3 is Abyss. So what we have here is two beacons, two pillars of the DC Universe, in their classic, as classic as can be outfits, and we have essentially a brand new character in Abyss that I know nothing about. He looks very Fortnite. And these are collector edition figures, the main difference being really the packaging. Metallic kind of look to them. And as you can see, you get a trading card base and more of an art card as opposed to the usual file card. There's that nice artwork on the back. We'll get into this Superman. We'll get into all the controversy. Let's open them up. And we'll start out with the Green Lantern, Alan Scott. This is everything he comes with. He's got the DC base. And these collector editions are fancy. They got a little silver DC logo. You also get a base for your trading card. We've seen this a couple of times now with some gold labels. And the card artwork here, you can see it's different because it's a full art card. And you get that silver on the bottom as opposed to your usual card with the white border now this figure is definitely not based on alex ross artwork it's definitely more like modern like rebirth versions of alan scott you do get the actual green lantern i was going to say the power battery but i think it's a bit different with alan scott and you get this flaming fist this magical effect to go on the fist hand and speaking of fist that's all you get the one fist has the lantern ring and the other one is a grip for that lantern now right off the bat you'll notice that alan scott is usually left-handed but if you look at the first appearance cover or if you look at modern versions, it is known to switch around. It doesn't really bother me, but I've seen it bother a lot of people, and you don't get any kind of swappable hand. They could have made both fists with a lantern ring and two grips and called that a day, but this is what we're left with, which is a classic Alan Scott, or at least as classic as it's gonna get. Like I said, I think technically this is like a modern, faithful version of it. Sure, there's gonna be little inaccuracies, but for me, this is what you need right here. Head Sculpt, I actually saw somebody take this painted up like how, and switch the Howl head onto here because he looks a bit older. And I will say, yeah, for anything, this Alan Scott definitely looks pretty young. He looks pretty uh, spry. And I picture Alan Scott as an old man. I feel like he always has been, That's not even if that's not the case. Cape here is interesting. I think the green is actually painted. Definitely something's going on with green paint here because you see a little splotch. And yeah, the rest of them, I'm wondering actually if this is the Blue Beetle Booster Gold. We're seeing a lot of that recently. Then again, no, you look at these cuffs on the arms but maybe something in the middle torso is reused. Speaking of which, that'll be my perfect segue into the Dread Lantern, San Diego Comic-Con. He's making a run-in. Never opened this guy up. We're going to do a comparison right now. And so here we go. The Dread Lantern versus the real Green Lantern, Alan Scott. This figure, I guess, technically came first. Starting to show up overseas. He became a San Diego exclusive. Did get him in the bundle. But they both showed up basically at the same time. If you know anything about toy manufacturing these two were being made side by side basically but yeah more of an excuse for me to open this guy I haven't looked at him yet so i'm not really going to call this guy a reuse because he's reusing the same guy that came out at the same time I i'd consider him more variants but i will say it's good to have this version it'd be very frustrating to just have the dread lantern now for his articulation i haven't looked at this exact body unless this is the blue beetle one i'm talking about Looks like about standard what you want your McFarlands to do, or at least what we've come to expect. Again, their butterfly is never quite useful, but it seems more useful maybe in the up and down because of this cape, and then all kinds of kick action, which he doesn't really even need. There's your tight toe hinge. And here's Alan Scott with the GL family, basically the four main Green Lanterns. I mean, I guess you could swap Alan for Guy, but I could give or take Guy Gardner. I'd love to see a Jessica Cruz. She's honestly one of my favorites. Check out the Bruce Timm movie with her. And then if they want to start giving us Abin Sor and Kilowog and the actual alien Green Lanterns. But I love this. You know, the Green Lantern side of DC, the Lantern, I'd be lying if I said I've read a whole bunch of it, but it really does fascinate me. And I love having these four as a collection. Again, even though Alan Scott kind of has different rules, he's not part of the core, but this is where it's at. This is a really cool team up right here. And then here he is with some more characters that might fit in. This Batman, I mean, he's technically Nightfall, but he honestly looks earlier than that. And then Jay Garrick and Alan Scott, very similar characters. You know, the original versions of those mantles, very different from any other versions after. But I'm glad time hasn't forgotten them. We got two great figures of these originators of the DC Universe. Up next, let's talk about Abyss. And for accessories, of course, you get the base. You get the trading card with the stand. You get one swappable hand that makes both into grips. And then you get his weapon, this double scythe that you can split apart and kind of recreate the image 
on the card. So again, you know, pretty brief with accessories here. I mean, at least you get this gesture hand, but to call this collector's edition, I mean, it is an all new sculpt. That's really what we're going to be looking at here. This is more grading it as a figure than a character because I don't know anything about Abyss. And I mean, to their credit, I probably will go out and, and seek out Batman Abyss and read it as a result of buying this. You know, the back of this trading card is like this mysterious character that Batman must defeat. So not a lot of details about this guy. He's going to be in that ghost maker territory of kind of obscure new school Batman characters. Before we get into it, I'll mention his platinum right away it has like a white and orange basically a taskmaster appearance and i got to do research on that too because i'm pretty sure this is like the only look of the character and if that's the case did they really need a platinum edition let me know if that's a real look of this guy now this guy here like i said in the beginning very fortnite looking to me like the proportions of him the long torso and even just kind of the design he's basically like the the raven short cape i love the texturing mcfarlane's always killing it with that and again you know at least there's enough different colors and paint where it needs to be where this doesn't really look cheap but i'm questioning did this need to be in the collector's edition line i feel i feel like this was maybe a character they're concerned about the sales of maybe that's why he's in collector edition so that you don't have another ghost maker or another grifter in terms of your peg warmers i feel like this guy is going to be up there either way but we'll see maybe this becomes a breakout character maybe todd's catching on early i do appreciate up at the face here it's kind of like those purge masks and i think that works you know he looks like a dark figure with these peering eyes coming out it's a cool effect and then the rest of them kind of this tactical weave underneath almost a spider coming out or a, a skeletal like rib cage similar to like the dark knight batman he's got a mixture of gray and black but i think it actually works better here now i'll be interested to see how this guy moves around hood is attached here that's gonna move but i think you can move the inner head as well i think this was done similarly on maybe green arrow you can let me know what figure had this torso pretty limited kind of in this rotation more so than we're used to bottom is not half bad shoulders have that butterfly but this is honestly one of the least effective ones that bicep's completely stuck let's try the other ones a bit better it's kind of got like a saggy diaper for a mcfarlane i would say definitely limited kick to the side no problem and a toe hinge i don't really need to see abyss next to too many characters but here he is with capullo batman who works really well with the purple and the lanky proportions and then three jokers batman and i don't have ghost maker with me but i think he's definitely going to go well with that neo noir future state look and finally in our main event we do have superman and for his accessories he got the base he got the card stand and then he comes with this chain breaking accessory now this is like a famous superman imagery but really it's not for me it seems kind of cheap you also get a flight stand which i was pretty surprised to see we've been missing a lot of flight stands recently but they were generous enough this time to give it to us in the $30 figure. Now getting into it, this is Superman I was really excited for. The prospect of first appearance is always very exciting. And this is a reuse of that infected Superman body. We've seen this body for so many Supermans, it's hard to count. You go ahead and you look at some of the finer sculpts of infected Superman. You got these cuffs at the wrist, and then you have these panel lines all over the legs especially of course the boot cuffs don't make any sense in this suit and even in the back you get this panel line now obviously that's covered by the cape but you know this is just a cloth suit it's the 1940s original superman suit and speaking of which you know i think big point of controversy with this figure not only is he 30 dollars, not only is he missing hands but also he doesn't have the red boots now if you look at this trading card you see the famous action comics superman cover he does have the little red boots. Now, technically, if you go into the pages of the first couple action comics, he doesn't have the blue boots. But honestly, I think the cover of action comics is a lot more famous than whatever's going on inside that book. So I think it's still wrong in terms of like what you want this figure to be. It's that first appearance, that cover of Superman, and you don't get it. They show it to you right in the box. Now, the platinum edition of this figure does have the red boots but it's a bit later of a Superman. It's still Golden Age, but he does have a different logo. And that guy, I won him on the raffle. Super excited. That might be figure of the year. This figure with the red boots, with the red logo, looks phenomenal. This one here, he's cool, but he's too specific. It's literally the first two issues of Action Comics inside the pages. But that being said, I love this blue color scheme. And this face sculpt is gorgeous. Seriously, one of the best they've ever made on a McFarlane. I think this is the best head sculpt ever made of a McFarlane DC figure. And even the paint apps, you get this rosy forehead and cheeks that you don't normally get on these kind of figures. So overall, I'm ashamed to say it, there's a lot of issues and a lot of uh, shady business going on here, but it's a beautiful figure. 
Articulation, we've seen all this before. I literally just reviewed Doomsday Superman. You could check out that video. Even then, I'm sure I probably skipped it. And then, yeah, for comparison, I think there hasn't been a Superman since the very first McFarlane DC figure. This Action Comics 1000 Superman, seriously, I think is the best one they've made. And pretty much everyone since has been on that infected body. There was Page Puncher. I think he's a bit too slim. But yeah, they've never reused this figure. And he does have the single elbows. There's some issues. But even still, I think he's the best superman they've made so far yet to beat him all the improvements over four years of this line still the best one my infected superman is all the way buried in my shelf right there so we'll use rebirth superman as we usually do and there yeah you see it's the exact same body this one's got a different diaper and then here he is with doomsday superman who we just looked at and here's the whole wave of collector's edition and that is going to do it for this first set of mcfarland dc collector's edition i think the main problem here is really just the price 30 dollars premium we're usually paying 20 for these guys and we're getting less hands than we should get on a regular figure that's superman infected how many times have we gotten that figure we've always gotten fist flight hands something like that we got nothing so in, in a way this reflects the best and the worst of mcfarlane all in one line you know now these collector edition figures are 30 bucks but it keeps the rest of the line at 20 i guess you can justify it that way but at the end of the day if you're saying a normal dc release is worth 20 then these are also worth 20. There's nothing different about them. You guys can let me know what you think about all this. As always, I'll leave it off with some figure photography. You can see more of that on my Instagram, scoopman underscore 5000, also on Twitter. You can check out my second channel where we do movie reviews, and I'll see you in the next action figure review.